Hello, everyone. How are you all? I hope you're all doing so well. It's, uh, it's Christmas Eve. I'm so excited. Um, and we're having quite the, quite the windstorm outside. So hopefully the sound of the wind is nice for you. <laughs> but you can hear my voice over the wind. Um, I'm not, I've been thinking about this for a, probably a couple weeks now. And so I just decided today was the day I was going to get on here and record this video for you. Um, and it's kind of interesting, actually, because I was going to do this last week. I got all my slides ready and I was all ready to go. And then I got hit with like a whopper of a cold. <laughs> and so that didn't happen. Um, but it's, you know, things happen the way they happen, right? I, it gave me some time to put a little bit more thought into things. Um, yeah, talk myself into it again. <laughs> so anyway, I'm here and it's Christmas Eve and I wouldn't rather be anywhere else than sharing this with you. Um, so, you know, in the work that I do, I, I work with people that are looking to improve their health, their, you know, their wellness overall. Um, and everyone has their own area of focus typically. Some people are looking to lose weight, some people are looking to work on a particular health ailment or condition, some people just want to have a, diff a shift of a mindset or a feeling. Um, so there's lots of different people with different dreams and different goals that I work with. Um, and prior to even starting this work, I was a teacher and I have been a volleyball coach for 20 years, which is insane to say. Um, and then even before that, I was an athlete. And so goal setting is something that has been in my realm, I guess, for as long as I can remember, basically. Um, and it's been interesting to sit and think back about that because most of the goal setting that I've ever done and I've been taught to do with others has been pretty standard. Um, I'm sure you've heard of SMART goals before, right? So as I was thinking about, um, you know, it's the new year is coming, right? People are looking for something to change. I'm going to this is my new new goal. This is my New Year's resolution. I want this in 2021. Um, and it got me thinking about why so many of us never reach those goals that we set. Um, and that can be pretty frustrating sometimes, especially depending on the kind of person you are. Um, and so I wanted to just kind of debunk that a little bit because I don't know that I've ever really explained sort of my philosophy on goals and how I work with people to help them reach their goals. So that's what this is all about. This is why are you not reaching your goals? This is what's actually going on. Uh, so I hope you like it. I'm gonna start my slides. So give me one sec here. Mm, where is there it is? Let me pop this up. There we go. All right. Oops. Too fast. There we go. So hopefully you can still see me, hear me, all good things. This is me. Um, small back pedal. If you don't know anything about me, my name is Diane. Uh, I, oh man, I can't even, I don't even know where to start really. I have been working on wellness for my whole entire life. <laughs> I used to say, oh, it's been about the last 10 years. No, no. Oh, it's been about the last 20 years. Actually, no. <laughs> this has really been a lifelong journey for me. Um, I was an athlete. I was always a little bit overweight and I couldn't figure it out because I was a really active person. Like I played several different sports, went on to play college in volleyball um, or volleyball in college, I should say. Oh, always active with my family, always heavy. 
Um, and I never felt right about that. I didn't, I didn't feel good about that. I was pretty hard on myself. Um, yeah, so that's where it started. When I look back now, I realize that's where it started. When I was 21, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which spurred me into a whole different wellness journey. Um, and it was, not gonna lie, it was not easy. Um, I had some amazing discoveries about myself and health and how I perceive health and wellness and what I believe to be important in our health and wellness. I had some amazing people that helped me find this, this for myself. Um, and I was introduced to holistic health in everything that it encompasses in terms of nutrition, um, meditation, yoga, uh, Reiki, acupuncture, massage. Like I just dove into all of it. Um, when I was... Well, let me say, I will say that nutrition was the first thing that um, I, I bought into and that had massive, life-changing, amazing, amazing results for me. Um, I, yeah, I changed in the way that I'd always wanted to change. And it was simply because I finally had someone teach me what I was sensitive to in terms of food and helped me to fill my body with things that it needed and amazing things happened. So that's a big part of what I do now. Um, but as my journey evolved, it's been a lot of the deeper stuff. It's been a lot of uncovering who I am. It's been a lot of um, learning about my limiting beliefs, um, how, where I hold myself back, you know, all that stuff, right? It's not always the stuff we want to do. It's not fun. Uh, it can be amazing, but it sometimes is really hard. Um, but yeah, so that's been a whole part of my wellness journey too. I've had jobs that I didn't like. I've had jobs that were toxic. I have had a teaching career that I loved, but I couldn't maintain because I was sick. Um, I've had four abdominal surgeries in five years was told I wouldn't have children after my first abdominal surgery because it was so invasive. And three months later, I was pregnant. I've had so much amazing, amazing abundance come into my life since I started this journey. And so I'm super excited to share it with you and to help you have this kind of an experience because it is possible. Okay, I had to say all that. <laughs> Goals. Why do we not meet our goals? We work so hard to set them. We might even, you know, put in all the physical action steps to help us get to the goal. We might do the work, the lifting work, the leg work, I would say. Um, why do they not happen? Okay. For a lot of people, goal setting just doesn't seem to work, right? So, in my teaching career and as a coach and as an athlete, we worked a lot with SMART goals. And I'm sure that you've heard about SMART goals before. Something specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and something that has a timeline, right? So we have this specific thing that is in our mind that we want. Um, I want to lose 20 pounds. There it is, it has a number, right? It's measurable, I can stand on the scale and see that I reached it or not. It is something that is attainable, right? It is possible for me to lose 20 pounds. It is something that's realistic. I haven't set the bar so, so high that it's not something that I can reach. And I would give myself a timeline, right? That's a smart goal. That's a really efficient, effective way of goal setting. Only it's not. Because it doesn't take into account anything that we are wired with that holds us back. And it's really interesting. So the first thing I want to talk about is the nervous system. Our nervous system is designed to keep us safe. And it does a awesome job to the point of actually what I would say is overperforming because it keeps us stuck because it's trying to keep us safe. So when we perceive something as stressful, 
And the key there is perceive because it may not actually be a life-threatening thing, right? The example I always use is the tiger in the jungle. If you are in the jungle and a tiger comes, you are scared for your life. There is a actual, physical, real chance that that tiger could eat you. That is the nervous system doing its job, right? Alarm bells going off. We have our stress hormones released. They make our body do all the things that are gonna keep us safe. We run faster, we think clearer, we see clearer, our heart is pumping more blood, our lungs are pumping more oxygen, all of our limbs are working, right? Everything is like highly functioning. All of the parts of us that are gonna keep us safe are put into action, right? It's pretty impressive. But our body responds the same way when it's not the tiger. It could be reach into my bag, you know, pull up my phone, read a message from my friend that is worded in a way that I'm like, oh, well, what does she mean by that? That is perceived as a threat. Off I go, boom, alarm bells are going, stress hormones are firing, body's changing, ha body changes are happening, which changes how I feel, right? Um, and usually, actually, that's where we function most of the time. It's more day in this day and age, it's often just like daily hassles, inconveniences that immediately push us into this fight or flight mode that we have for survival. Our nervous system is just like firing like crazy all the time, pushing us because of how we perceive something. There isn't actually a real threat to us most of the time. Okay, on the other side of things, we have what I call rest and digest where our uh, digestion happens, where our immune system is working, where we are breathing deep, deep belly breaths, very soothing, very calming breaths, or our heart rate goes down, our blood pressure goes down, our reproductive organs are functioning, all the things that we don't need when we're threatened, but we need for sustained life, okay? So that's what happens when you know that's what's going on when we're when we're facing things in our daily life most of the time we're getting pushed into our fight or flight that rest and digest doesn't get as much attention as it should from us and a lot of this is because of how we perceive things so when we think about goals i just want you to think for a second if a goal is something that is usually comfortable right most goals push us outside of our comfort zone. They probably excite us. Uh, they might make us a little nervous, but we're not in our comfy, safe place when we're reaching for something, when we're reaching for a goal. We're getting pushed into that, well, I'm not so sure about this. Can I really do it? What if, right? Perceiving, mind is perceiving that as stressful fight or flight. So when we have these goals and we perceive them in that way, which most of us do on a regular basis, we're going to do three things. We're going to freeze. So we do nothing. And then we don't hit our goal. We're going to flee. We're going to just run in the other direction. <laughs> like, no, too hard. I'm out. <laughs> Some of us will fight. Not very many. And actually, this typically is more um, what we see with men because of like evolutionary processes, right? We back when um, they would have been the ones to go and fight the tiger, right? So um, that that comes into play. But even even a lot of men will not, right? Too hard, too scared, too outside my box. I'm stopping or I'm going in the other direction. That's what most of us do. And so our nervous system that is designed to keep us safe is keeping us so safe because those goals are just like, no, oh, it's pretty, it's a little scary over there. Um, I'm just going to stay here. And then we're stuck. Okay. So this is like a physiological thing in our body, our nervous system working, but sometimes working against us when it comes to our goals. The good thing is there are things we can do about this.
right? Look at that. I love that picture. A goal should scare you a little and excite you a lot. But how do we get from, you know, that, that place on the edge of that rock where we can look over the edge and be like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the first step and, and be able to continue taking every step without our nervous system totally going crazy, putting us into such a fight or flight mode that we just backpedal. We get back to that side as fast as we can. How do we do that, right? That takes some work and it's not going to be about how many salads you eat or how many times you lift that barbell. It's going to be about how do we change the way that we perceive things? How do we get ourselves feeling so good and so safe and happy on a regular basis that we have the ability to, to be so aware of what we're perceiving and just say, Oh, you know, that's okay. It's, it's not stressful. It's not, it's not scary. I'm good. And we take the next step. How do we get there? Okay. We have to get there. We got to, we got to, if we're going to reach our goals, we have to work through that stuff. The other thing that is keeping us stuck is our subconscious mind. Our subconscious really is running the show. And I've been doing a lot of learning about this lately, even though I have seen teachers, actually one of my most respected mentors uses this analogy. Um, I've also heard it referred to of like the computer, right? Um, like the hard drive with the screen on top, right? There's so many different ways that we can look at this. But if you want to think about the iceberg, because I have the picture on the screen, the iceberg is your conscious mind. It's all of the things that you think that you're aware of in your thoughts every day. It's the, it's the mind that is saying, I want to lose 20 pounds. It's the mind that's saying, I'm going to make, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars this year. Um, it's the one that is setting the goal, right? I want this. I see this. I want this. I like this. I'm doing this. That's the conscious mind. But if you notice, there's only a little bit of, of it above the water. <laughs> and a lot of what's going on is actually under the water where we don't see it. It's the subconscious. We don't even most of the time know what is going on in our subconscious mind. It's there from however old you are, I'm 41, 41 years of the same thoughts happening in your mind over and over and over. Those pathways are firing without even thinking about it. Some of it's coming from our DNA, right? Some of it's coming from how we were raised. Some of it's coming from stuff that happened that made an imprint and now we have this repetitive message that we send in our mind but we don't even know what's happening most of the time. Okay, that subconscious part on top, that's only about 5% of everything that we're thinking. 95% of it is under the water. That's 95% is in the subconscious. So when we make a conscious decision to go for something, I have a goal, I want the goal. We have not, that's 5%, think of it like a tug of war. 5%, I want the goal, 95%. Oh, but this is what we're usually doing. This is what we're usually saying. And this is not what's going towards the goal. It's pulling you in the other direction most of the time. So who's going to win that tug of war, right? The subconscious. 80% of the thoughts that we think were the same as the thoughts that we thought the day before. And they're not always thoughts that are serving us either. So how are we supposed to move towards a goal that we think we want, but 95% of our thoughts are pulling us in a different direction. Right? Doesn't make sense. So there is work to do, my friends. It doesn't matter how many salads you eat. It doesn't matter how many times you lift that weight. We got to figure out what's being said to yourself in your subconscious mind. We got to kind of figure out what some of those things are so that we can be more, a little bit more mindful, a little bit more aware, and start reprogramming some of that stuff to move you in the direction that you want to go. Because truly, you're working against, you're, we're working against some pretty tough stuff. Um, and I don't mean to sound like all gloom and doom. I think for sure we can achieve our goals. 
but I think not in the traditional way that we've been taught. Smart goals, I'm gonna be really diligent, I'm gonna have everything laid out and boom. Not for most people, okay? We got a lot of work to do underneath so that we can get everything moving in the same direction to achieve the goal. So this is what I have created. I call them, they're still SMART goals, but they're a little bit different. And they take on a very holistic perspective when it comes to achieving our dreams, whatever the goal is, okay? So I shared with you that my journey, um, when I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis was um, the big changes happened for me when I started learning about nutrition. Um, and it wasn't so much, I mean, it came because of nutrition, but it was because I felt physically felt better that I was able to dive into so much more. So this is something that I believe is really foundational when we're trying to make a shift in our life. In some way, you wouldn't be watching this video if A, you weren't interested in goals and B, you weren't quite feeling like goals were something that you could achieve. And in that way, you're not feeling your best, right? Something is holding you back. So I focus on small, manageable changes and daily healthy habits. And this is looking at, at goal setting in terms of, I need to be physically, foundationally strong, and healthy in order for me to reach my goals. Because if we don't have that foundational health, everything is a lot harder. It's not to say you can't do it, but it's a lot harder. If you think about it when you wake up on a day when you're just super tired, right? You didn't sleep well, maybe you have a headache, so tired, so drained, and all you wanna do is lay in bed versus waking up, feeling amazing, feeling full of energy, feeling strong, feeling healthy. Like, even as I say this, I can feel the difference in my body. You know what I mean? Like, you're way more likely to go after your goals if you feel good, okay? We can make small changes. We can create daily healthy habits with nutrition, with reducing toxicity in our life, with just small stuff that has a huge impact on how far we'll go. And that's where I start when it comes to goal setting. Even if your goal is not related to weight or health, or maybe your goal is related to your business, it doesn't matter. You need healthy foundations in order to thrive and do all the things that you want to do. So that's where I start. The next thing is mindset and mindfulness. And if you have not explored mindfulness, that's probably why you're here. <laughs> um, we need to have a mindset that is helping us move in the direction of the great things that we want. And sometimes we can get in cycles where our thoughts are just really negative, um, where we're not mindful or aware of what we're thinking and how that's impacting us and what we want. And so this is something that is massive when it comes to goal setting and reaching our goals and our dreams. We have to have the mindset and the mindfulness to get us there. We have to. And so this is something else that we work on in these holistic SMART goals. I also mentioned awareness, right? Being, being mindful enough, being aware enough to catch ourselves in the moment when we're having those moments, and we will where our subconscious is taking over. Oh, well, we probably shouldn't do that because that happened last time and I didn't like the way that felt, so I'm just gonna go over here, right? No, what's going on? Okay, why am I feeling this way, right? We have to be aware of what we do and how we feel and what we act and what our hiccups are, right? It takes some awareness. And so, you know, we work through a bunch of stuff, stuff to help you become a little bit more aware of your tendencies and how we can shift them. We also reflect. And maybe this is something you can even do right now because it's, you know, New Year's is coming, Christmas is here. This is always sort of like a, a there's some 
in my world anyway, some like finality to the end of the year, but all of this like kind of bowling excitement about what the next year is going to look like, especially this year <laughs> for so many people, like 2020 needs to go away, bring on 21. Um, but that reflecting is really important, right? And we can reflect back further. We can reflect into the last year or beyond. Uh, and we can also even just reflect maybe the day before or even a few minutes before, like, what, what was that? What just happened? Why did I do that? Or how did that make me feel? And reflection will involve periods of time where you need to be disciplined enough to sit down and like probably write some stuff out, like get it out. But can also, when you're mindful and aware, it can just happen in the moment and it becomes part of a, a way of living so that you're constantly taking in information about what happened, what am I learning, where am I going, and you just sort of flow with that, and it's really cool. And then the last thing is talking it out. And this is honestly where a mentor comes in, because as much as we try, there are going to be times when you get stuck again. Something sets you off, nervous system fires, something is too uncomfortable subconscious is telling us another story right those things are going to happen and so having someone that you can talk it out with uh, a mentor that you can run questions by a group that you can hear people sharing their um, similar experiences and realize that you're not alone um, somebody to help you in the moment right when you need it when you just need someone to say hey wait what what's going on there Okay, well, let's work through that. Talking it out is big. So these are my SMART goals. These are what I do now. No more specific, measurable, attainable, realistic time. No. They don't work. There's not enough depth. There's, not a, there's no layers. Guys, we are deep beings. We are complicated. We exist on so many different levels and we're all at somewhere different. We are all totally unique. A smart goal doesn't work for everyone. It, it just doesn't, it can't, we're not all the same. So these holistic smart goals <laughs> stand a much better chance of getting you to where you want to go because there's some, there's some layers in there, right? There's some, there's some work to be done other than just lifting the physical weight or eating all the salads, right? We get to learn about ourselves. We get to grow. We get to dive in. And as sometimes uncomfortable as that can be in the moment, it's going to take you so far. And you're going to come out knowing yourself so much better than you did before on so many different wavelengths. It's super cool. So... This is what I do. Uh, and right now I'm offering the complete wellness lifestyle program. <laughs> I chuckle because I don't feel that it's a super creative name <laughs> for a program, but that's what came to me. And I, that's what it is. It is, it's complete. And you'll notice the eat, meaning there is a nutritional focus in this because we have to be healthy. We have to have healthy foundations to take us where we want to go. We just do. So we do. We focus on nutrition in this. Uh, in the first couple of weeks, um, we will take a really good look at your lifestyle, uh, what nutrition looks like for you now. Um, we'll give you opportunities to you know, reflect a little bit on that. And then we make some small manageable changes to get you moving in the direction that you want to go. Um, if you have something going on that you have a serious ailment or a condition, um, or you have goals that are related to nutrition, weight, weight loss, all of that, then this is also perfect for you. Um, Cause we'll work through all of that. And the other work we're going to do is going to help you to, make this a lifestyle shift, not just a eight week program, right? Um, which 
particularly if you have a focus on your health right now, that's, it's critical. You can't just kind of dig your toe in and then pull out again. You know, once you know what you know, you know, and you got to go with it. So um, we will have group coaching calls. So I just love this because, again, we pull so much from each other. We learn so much from each other. So this gives you an opportunity to hear some of the stuff other people are going through. And so often um, when I run these programs, it just aligns so nicely. Um, I've learned so much from the people that I have met in programs like this. Uh, some amazing, amazing people. But anyway, so we will have some group coaching calls. You'll also get some individual calls with me. There's a 90 minute call at the beginning and then another one midway through so we can assess. And then you also just have access to me. So, you know, there's the talk it out, right? When stuff comes up and you need a, you need someone to be like, Hey, whoa, okay. Take a second. Let's, let's figure this out. That's, you have access to me for these eight weeks that you can text me, you can message me, you can shoot me an email and I will be there to help you. Um, after we go through the nutritional stuff, which happens kind of at the beginning, then we're going to spend, excuse me, the last few weeks and we're going to work through all of the things that are going to help you manage your nervous system, <laughs> how you perceive things as stressful so that you're not constantly firing into fight or flight pulling you away from the things that you want, we're going to be able to soothe that nervous system so that you can function and have things happen and not immediately go into alarm mode. Okay. So we're working on how we perceive things. We also have some amazing strategies for just getting in a little bit to that subconscious and, and uh, working with it. I, I thought as soon as I said that I had the image in my mind of a warm blanket because sometimes when we are looking at subconscious stuff, it's not stuff we'd like to talk about. It's buried for a reason. We don't want to know, or we don't want to talk about, we don't want it. We don't want the emotion that comes with that stuff. Sometimes I think that's where the blanket came in that this is a safe place to work through that stuff. Um, and I don't know if you visualize, I can visualize right now a pink cozy blanket around my shoulders and around the shoulders of any of you that come into this program. Um, you know, like I've got you, it's okay. We can work through that stuff and it's going to make such, uh, an impact on where you go. Uh, you're going to know yourself so much better. Um, and then you guys, the stuff that I love about this is like a helping you get what you want, but also just seeing the shift in, in you, you're going to be happier. You're going to be able to feel more gratitude and appreciation. Um, and when we do that, like literally you guys stuff just starts to open up and I can speak for this. Like the last couple of months have been insane in terms of I finally got to a place where I really had a, a massive feeling of appreciation for all of the amazing things that were happening in my life. And it was literally like a flip of a switch and I was just beaming with joy, like so happy. And not that I haven't done that before, but it wasn't there for a little while and it's back and oh my gosh. And when you feel good, when you're feeling healthy, when you are working on yourself, when you feel so much joy in your heart for the littlest things. Oh my gosh. Like that is, I think the biggest part about this program is just how much happier you will feel day to day as you go in this direction. It's so awesome. So anyway, I just want to thank you for listening for a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess that's what I want to leave you with. I realized I didn't even talk about the price that was on the last screen, which you would think that I would do, but huh, it was there. You can go back and look at it if you want. Um, it is an investment in you. And I also learned recently that until you believe that you're worth it enough, you won't invest in yourself. 
that is too bad because once once you do so many amazing things can happen and then just more amazing things happen and it's this big cycle um but i totally get the the hesitation of like it's a sum of money and how do i figure that out like maybe there's other bills that need to be paid i know that this is important for me i can feel it's important but how do i figure that out like honestly just message me um because that was me a couple months ago and you know what i figured it out and i'm so glad that i did i'm so glad that i jumped in um i am a people person you should know that about me uh and i love getting to know people and i'm really really excited to know you the real you um with all that you're willing to share and to help you move things into a direction that you really want to go um and i just i <laughs> I have to read this one little quote that is on the screen right now. It says, you're already halfway there because you're here. And if you've listened this long, then you're here for a reason. So uh, like I said, if you have any questions at all, if you want to chat about any of this, whether you just want to chat about goal setting a little bit, or you have any questions about this program, just, um, yeah, shoot me a message, email me. That's my cell phone number on there. So you can text me there too. Um, I would love to chat with you and I can answer any questions that you have. And then, yeah, all you need to do is jump. Just the hardest part is, uh, thinking about it. Honestly, once you jump, it's golden. <laughs> so anyway, it's Christmas Eve. I think my kids are getting ready to go sledding with my husband and I'm going to go too. So I want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening. Let me know if I can help. Um, yeah, I wish you all the blessings and the love. Merry Christmas.